Tech Dorsey's fintech company Block has launched its self-custody Bitcoin wallet, BitKey, for pre-order in more than 95 countries. That happened last week. Joining us now to discuss is Max Guys, the Bitcoin wallet lead at Block. Max, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Now, congratulations on the launch. This launch last week in over 95 countries. Are you able to give us an update on how many pre-orders you've received so far? I can't talk about specific numbers, but I'm really excited that we're available in 95 countries and that we've seen orders from quite a few of them already. Uh, and I think maybe I'll take a quick step back and just talk about what BitKey is. Uh, so BitKey is a self-custody Bitcoin wallet with a mobile app, a secure hardware device, and a set of recovery tools. And what BitKey does is put the keys that actually represent Bitcoin ownership in people's hands. And that's because today most people don't actually hold the keys that control their Bitcoin. Instead, they leave them on an exchange or a custodial platform, typically the one where they bought their Bitcoin in the first place. And that leaves them open to a couple of significant risks. One is mismanagement of funds, like what we've seen with FTX. Not that long ago that uh, people were recommending FTX as a fantastic place to buy and store Bitcoin. Uh, the second is hacking. Uh, large exchanges uh, become a big centralized target for attackers. Uh, and then the third is something we call the paper cuts of self-custody. Uh, when you know a custodial platform holds the keys to the Bitcoin, make the, they make the rules. Uh, they decide how much money uh, you can move, to whom and when. Uh, and what Bitkey does is put keys in customers' hands and put them in, in control. So as you mentioned, so much of the transactions happen on centralized exchanges. So what happens for the user? How does the user, uh, let's say the average retail user who knows how to trade crypto on, on an essentially, I'm not going to name any names, but can they, how easy is it for them to on, uh, offload those crypto onto their, onto their uh, device or, or wallet? and then back onto the exchange when they want to get out of uh, out of their position. Yeah, so this is a really important question because today we believe that the vast majority of Bitcoin owners actually do need to be able to move to and from their local currencies, uh, whether that's you know right when they use a local currency to purchase Bitcoin and then move that to self custody, or if that's you know they need to pay a bill or they need, want to move their, their crypto or Bitcoin for any reason, they need to move it back to an exchange. And with in the Bitkey mobile app, we're making that really easy by integrating with exchanges. So we actually partnered, uh, we've announced partnerships with Coinbase uh, and Cash App. And uh, what we are doing is, is basically through the Bitkey app, connecting people directly to the custodial platforms uh, that are relevant to them in their area and making it really easy to seamlessly move Bitcoin out of an exchange and into Bitkey uh, when they, they buy and back if they need to offload. Uh, that's not the only way that you can move Bitcoin to and from Bitkey uh, and between a custodial platform. Bitkey's a Bitcoin wallet, so you can transfer to and from any Bitcoin address, any Bitcoin wallet. Uh, you know, even without this, this, these partnerships just make it easier. You know, we mentioned that you've launched in 95 countries. I asked our last guest about marketing strategy. I know Block has done a fair bit of research on the needs of folks, especially when it comes to Bitcoin outside of the United States, any particular region you're focusing on? Uh, it's a little early to say. One of the really neat things about launching in such a broad set of countries is we get to see a lot of traction in different areas. Uh, what I will share here is that when we've done customer research and through both our, our marketing and, and early insights into, uh, into our orders, uh, we see traction in a lot of different use cases. So we have you know, folks who are uh, holding long-term uh, in the US, for example, uh, but we also have a lot of customers that we've talked to uh, who are subject to inflation and maybe immediately moving you know, their paycheck into Bitcoin, uh, but have expenses later that month that they're moving right back out uh, and they want a safe place to hold that in the interim. And so we're seeing traction in both. You, you mentioned questions or, or uh, concerns about what custodians uh, allow people to uh, withdraw and, and, and the like. Uh, some of that has to, of course, with AML uh, and, and other, uh, other issues with anti-terrorism and the like as well. So uh, in this situation with, uh, with the device, 
what exactly with, with big key what exactly happens um in that regards i i mean like is there any inf- what are the security risks so to speak and i'm not talking about security in terms of getting hacked but i'm talking about actual i don't know uh bad guys using it to get money out from one place to another i mean we have a war potentially a couple of wars going on right now and some of it might be financed with cryptocurrency whether we like to admit it or not i'm sorry what, what was what was the question so what is it, it are, are there any safeguards with that i mean if it, it, it can, can let's say vladimir putin go you know what this 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 thing that the the, the block put out is pretty cool I'm going to be using that to to uh, get some money into to Russia so I can finance a war or I don't know Hamas or something. Like, what uh, do you guys have any safeguards for that? Like, w- w- what's going on here? Yeah. So, so the reality is the the focal point for uh, the kinds of regulations that you're getting at is actually on exchanges. It's where uh, at the point of purchase, at the point of sale, uh, and you know, I've talked before about exchange partners that we work with, and that's where you would expect to see um, and 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 where custodial platforms are actually regulated quite differently than self-custody solutions. So uh, today, in general, uh, self-custody, like BigKey, for example, is regulated the way consumer electronics are, uh, the way hardware and software tools are, uh, as opposed to, um, you know, some of the contrasting situations that the custodial platforms are subject to. So if if I have a if somebody has a friend, let's say I don't know, so somebody in Hamas has a friend who has a nice Coinbase account, they could conceivably put it on the device, hand it over to them, be like, "Hey, good luck, guys. Have fun with that." Uh, we don't we don't sell uh, big key to sanctioned countries or sanctioned individuals. We're a EU and uh, and US uh, company, and we're uh, subject to and comply with sanctions law. But conceivably, that somebody who is in a sanction, non-sanctioned country could then turn over, can then turn over the thing to to somebody who is in a sanctioned country, and then can they use it from there? Uh, because of the sanctions regulations, there are some features of BitKey that aren't available in a sanctioned country, even if that happens. Okay. All right, and and quickly before we go, we had Ledger on the show yesterday. We of course all remember earlier this year, Ledger received criticism for their Recover uh, program. It's still launched. They still are uh, trucking forward. Talk to us about BitKey's recovery tools. How do how are they different, or are are they similar? Uh, so what we're trying to do with BitKey is make self custody a realistic option for a very broad audience, and a big part of that for us is blunting what we call the sharp edges of self-custody. And a lot of that stems from the potential for accidental loss. We've all forgotten passwords, gotten locked out of accounts. Uh, And what we're focused on is bringing a set of familiar tools that can keep people safe uh, without the kinds of highly technical setup uh, and without being burdened uh, with a 12 or 24 word password that you you can't lose and you can't let anybody see. And these are the kinds of things that uh, most of the alternatives uh, result in today and often leave people in an unsafe state. And so uh, the way we're solving this is using an underlying feature of the Bitcoin protocol called multi-signature. And BitKey is a, what we call a two of three wallet. There are actually three keys. Any two of them are required to move money. We put two keys in customers' hands, one in the mobile app, which is the primary interface that people use to own and manage their Bitcoin with BitKey, uh, and one in the secure hardware device so that is kept offline. Uh, the third key is held by block, and that's used for really two things. One is to give customers flexibility to spend up to a mobile, uh, spend up to a limit that they configure using just their phone and block, uh, and also to help people recover when they lose their phone, their hardware device, or even both. Uh, and we think this is a really important aspect. We, we need to have a familiar and easy experience uh, for people who are leaving their coins on custodial platforms today and are used to the kinds of convenience that come with, with custodians. All right, Max, we are going to have to leave it there. Congratulations on, on the launch. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to inviting you back to, to chat about how the launch goes and, and um, you know, maybe what, what countries are, are picking up Bakey more than others. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Thank you. That was Block Bitcoin Wallet Lead, Max Guys.